Palaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. For a minute, it looked like we had the royal story of the century in a century that's been filled with a lot of royal stories. Expert Ingrid Seward said, Unfortunately, it points to Meghan, doesn't it? Maybe Harry was a little in love with Kate. You can hear everyone drop their teacups. Wouldn't that be quite the story? Wouldn't that kind of explain everything from the rift between the brothers to Meghan's anger at the whole situation? Seward quickly cleaned that up, realising what she had done. No, 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 I don't mean physically, but mentally. Remember when it was just the three of them? He always longed for a sister. He told Diana that. Psychologically, I think he just adored her, and he was always there at Kensington Palace in their fridge. You know, what's for supper? Meghan and Harry were notably absent from the Super Bowl. There were rumours of an invitation, yet in an unexpected decision, the couple opted not to participate in the event. Harry recently made headlines by appearing at the NFL Awards, where he presented the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award to Cameron Hayward of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Harry's presentation was marked by his easy demeanor and humor, poking fun at NFL players for taking a breather every 15 seconds and playfully suggesting a shorter season for the sport. Instead of a 10-month season, let's just make it 18 weeks. Genius. Some speculated that Meghan did not want to be overshadowed by Taylor Swift. The privacy-minded couple are expected to spend Valentine's Day in Vancouver on Invictus Games-related business. A source told OK Magazine that Harry wants to patch things up with the royals, but Meghan doesn't want anything to do with it and is keen to stay away from England, but Harry is of the opinion that he must repair the damage that has been caused. I think there have been plenty of emotional conversations and heart-to-hearts over the best way to handle the situation and move forward. Harry wants to put an end to the feud and regrets the way things have turned out. I think there is no plan B for Harry. Patching things up with the family is the only option. It finally hit home how difficult it will be to repair the damage caused by the various swipes at his family over the years. The King shared a message which reads, I would like to express my most heartfelt thanks for the many messages of support and good wishes I have received in recent days. All of those who have been affected by cancer will know such kind thoughts are the greatest comfort and encouragement. It is equally heartening to hear how sharing my own diagnosis has helped promote public understanding and shine a light on the work of all those organisations which support cancer patients and their families across the UK and wider world. My lifelong admiration for their tireless care and dedication is all the greater as a result of my own personal experience. A royal insider told OK Magazine that Harry came home to see for himself what was going on. They said he, Harry, needed to know what his dad had told him about his illness over the phone was true and both something that he had sugarcoated not to worry him. Once he was sure that the king was in the best hands, he calmed down a bit and realized that he had time to work things out. Harry wasn't the only one with a wake-up call. On GB News, royal commentator Pandora Forsyth called this all a wake-up call for William that he will indeed be the king one day. Forsyth said, I think it has been a complete shock for everybody. Charles is the oldest monarch we've ever had, so quite frankly, the fact we're now thinking about this not even two years into his reign is quite worrying. The Times floated the notion of some insiders being frustrated that William isn't fully stepping into the substitute monarch role. A source said, at times like this, it is a reminder that as well as being the future head of state, he is also a human being. He is processing the news of his father having cancer as a human being. Given the seriousness with which he takes his role, of course, it is something he will be thinking about. The mystery over Kate continues. She is said to be recovering well. Royal source Deep Crown says that it's been this long without even a rumour of substance about Kate's health truly speaks volumes. The silence itself is reassuring, indicating that there's no significant news to report. Palace Intrigue will be right back. Prince Andrew was recently observed in high spirits, sharing laughs and enjoying a horseback ride near his residence in Windsor. On this particular day, Andrew was wearing a jacket, bearing the emblem of the Grenadier Guards, where he once held the title of Honorary Colonel, and seemed to be engaging in light-hearted conversation with another rider as they rode around Windsor, 
close to his home at Royal Lodge. His cheerful demeanour was also noticeable as he departed from his home in his vehicle prior to the horse riding session. Deep Crown observed, The optics here are frankly appalling. At a time when the royal family is navigating through a period of genuine concern, Andrew's seemingly carefree demeanour comes off as remarkably tone deaf. It's a stark reminder of the disconnect that can exist, further complicating the public's view of the monarchy. In other royal news, following Queen Margrethe II's abdication and the ascension of King Frederick X of Denmark, Frederick and Mary are embarking on a tour of the Nordic region. Their itinerary includes state visits to Sweden and Norway in May, followed by extensive tours of the Faroe Islands and Greenland aboard the royal yacht Dannenbrog in June and July. These initial state visits offer the new royal couple the opportunity to meet with the heads of state of Sweden and Norway, strengthening the bonds between the Nordic monarchies. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalacehendrick at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or your app of choice. If you're on YouTube, hit subscribe. It really helps us out. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Good times. Good times.